Hey guys, welcome. Hope you guys are doing well. As you can see, the title of this video is called Pioneers, The Power to Possess Your Promise, Ezra, and this is a prophetic release. It'll be a little bit of teaching, but um, this is the release that God wanted me to do on today specifically. And he gave this to me on uh, December, uh, December 25th, actually, the morning of, but he didn't want me to release it until now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pray and get started, and then um, we'll jump right in, okay? Father God, I just thank you for all the people that are gathered, Father God, that will hear this message whenever you wish them to see this, Father God, and that they would align their hearts, Father God, they would open their minds and their ears to receive what you would have for them. We just thank you and adore you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit, which brings comfort to our hearts, Father God, which just loves us, Father God, and we, we just ask that everyone watching, Father God, would open their hearts to you, Father God. I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone, Father God, that is watching that they would just come to you and and draw to you closer father god that they would understand the deeper knowledge of your love and the the blessing that you have for them and the purpose that you have for them in their life we thank you for this amazing amazing prophetic release we thank you for this decree father god and this release over our lives and everyone that's watching father god we just thank you that you're pushing back the enemy father god that has tried to destroy so many of our destinies father god but we know that with you that nothing can stop us father god and i plead psalm 91 of, of protection father god of angelic protection father god over our lives over our families our children father god and anyone of father god um associated with us father god that you would continue to release your angels to to guide us in in our days father god as we we go father god to walk out what you've called us to walk out in the earth and we thank you and we love you dearly in jesus name we pray amen so <clears throat> The Lord wanted me to um, talk a little bit about the the Ezra anointing, right? Um, the Ezra anointing is exactly what the title is of this um, video. It's the power to possess your promise. And I'll tell you how the Lord gave this to me after I kind of um, explain a little bit of like what what it means so for some of you that don't kind of understand this this language so um Ezra was a, a pro he was a prophet but he really was a scribe and he was a high priest in Babylon he was born in Babylon and so this is during the time of exile um of the Israelites during um the king of Persia and the king of Persia released eventually Ezra to go back to Jerusalem and to teach the laws of god he was released to do that um which is amazing so you know and ezra really is the ability to possess you know to rebuild to restore and that's what god is doing in this hour but he wanted me to go a little bit more in depth so um and why it says pioneers he, he gave that to me as well because uh, for some of us, we're going to do things that we have never seen done before. And it's not something we can mimic um, or even yeah, look at a template. But it's going to come straight from the Holy Spirit, straight from God. Um, so he wants us to rely on him to do that. Um, so the Lord first gave me this, like I said, on December 25th. So Christmas Day, Christmas morning to be exact. Um earlier that month in december the lord had um spoken to me prophetically and said you know he wanted me to spend some time with him uh for christmas to be alone and um he was really adamant about it and so i agree i obviously agreed to do that and i wanted to do that and i was getting ready to go to actually another state to spend some time with him not not far it was the next state over um and it was the morning of i got up really early and as I was waking, um, and where he was sending me is personally my promised land, like something he promised me. Uh, for some of you, I think if you've seen my prior video to this, which is called um, Those Who Remain, if you haven't seen that, go watch that. Um, but 
he for me had said like you know he wants me to go to another state that's my home that's part of the promise he's releasing to me and um you know however long that takes but i knew like that's something he wants to to give me and that there are people aligned and for me to work with there and it's the same thing for some of you that i mentioned in the other video about new beginnings um but basically as I was preparing to do that, uh, it was, you know, a prophetic act, basically. But also, he wanted me to spend time with him to go there. And as I was waking to prepare for the, the this trip for Christmas morning to spend time with the Lord, um, as I was waking from my sleep, um, I literally heard, um, you know, the Ezra anointing. And that's why, like, a literal voice I heard said, the Ezra anointing, you know, you... Um, the Ezra anointing, the power to take back your promise. All I heard was the Ezra anointing. So I knew, and I had my Bible written right next to me. And actually prior to like that week, I was reading uh, First Chronicles. So First Chronicles, um, Ezra or Ez, Ez, Ezdras, um, and some say Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. These are all in the Old Testament, for those of you who don't know. And um, so I was reading First Chronicles prior to, but... I didn't really, you know, know a lot about it. Um, like, I knew about it, but, I, you know, I hadn't, like, studied in depth or whatever. But basically, as I was awaking, um, the Lord said that to me. He said, the Ezra anointing. And I wrote it down, and I looked, you know, he had me look it up and all that. And I was like, wow. Wow, Lord. Like, that's this is amazing. And so he didn't want me to release it until now. Um, I didn't even know I was going to start doing more teachings at that point online. So, um and literally, you know, that's what it means. It's the power to take back or uh, to possess your promise. And to explain a little bit about anointing, some of you have heard of the anointing or anointings and all this stuff. And in the Old Testament, you know, prophets and teachers and high priests, they use the oil. It's, you know, um, it, it's an anointing, a symbolic, the oil or the anointing is symbolic on earth. And it's represents, it's a representation of what the anointing really is, which is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, you know, is in us. We get it from the Lord after we've said that we accept Jesus Christ and we, we're starting to walk that out in our lives. And the anointing really simply, I, you know, when the Holy Spirit started teaching me. He never said anointing until, you know, now. Like, because a lot of people use it and know it. And obviously, it's in the Bible. But just for you that don't kind of understand church lingo, if you watch this and you're not, like, a believer or you're just, like, new to the faith, that's what it is. It's essentially the Holy Spirit that empowers you to possess, to do whatever you're called to do in the earth. So, and there's doses and levels of the Holy Spirit that's released in you. There's oh, just like, because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God and there are levels and levels of levels and unmeasurable levels to God because our God is beyond compare. He's amazing. He's like, you know, we can't define him really. He's so much more than what we, we see written. And so that's why it's so important to continue to seek him and go deeper in him and if you haven't been baptized by the Holy Spirit, to ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because that's going to be able to help you understand things better when you read the Word of God. And also, you know, He'll start speaking to you more and more and more, um, and you'll hear Him better. And, you know, it's just it just opens and unlocks so much more um, to the Scriptures and to your life and your relationship. Um, as you, you have that experience with the Holy Spirit, um, and that comes with obedience as well, like obeying the word of God, doing what he asks you to do. There might be stuff in your life he eventually will tell you to stop doing or take away or or add. And to be obedient to that, because even if you don't understand why yet, because that's going to help you, um, that's going to unlock something in your relationship with the Lord. And I didn't mean to say that, so that's definitely for someone like that. If you've been hungering for the Lord or you just don't understand God just like trust him and he will uh, do what he said he was going to do. He's going to unlock something that you've been wanting and yearning for from him, um, essentially. So I just want to explain the anointing a little bit before I go into it, like what it is. It's essentially, it's the Holy Spirit in you and there are different levels to um, the Holy Spirit, you know, your relationship with the Holy Spirit, essentially. And, you know, 
by me speaking this, it is a release over your life that you, in this hour, you have the release. God is saying you have the power to possess the promise, your promise. You have the power to take back everything in your life that the enemy has stolen or that you've missed or you think you've missed or that you've given up because, you know, people have come in against you or just by mistakes that, you know, we, we mess up sometimes, we make the wrong choices. And God is releasing and restoring back to us everything like everything god is not joking in this hour that he wants to restore his people and just like that's why he used ezra like just like you know he used ezra to teach the laws of god and and it was around the time of the second temple rebuilding which was to honor god you know to put back the altar of god to put back where god should be number one in our lives number one in our worship you know number one in everything that we do and say that we love should be god right and that was the power of that anointing to restore god in his rightful place and then also a release like part of this release is it is for your promise to take back whatever was stolen but it's also for you to restore he, this specifically because ezra was a scribe and a teacher um he was a high priest so he taught you know and um God, you know, just like he spoke over me, he's been speaking over some of you and all of you, really, because as believers, we should know what we believe and why. And if you don't, God's trying to release that in you so that when you just come in contact with people, not in a forceful way, but just day to day, like if they have a question, you might be able to approach it and not that you have to know everything and be fearful of that because no one knows everything. Even a, a teacher in you know the secular world doesn't know everything. And that's why God's like, don't worry about, he says in scripture, like, don't worry about what you're going to say. Just if you spend time with me, you have my Holy Spirit. I will give you the words and not to be afraid. And the number one thing God wants us to do is release love. So if we can do that in our day-to-day -day actions, that's going to teach a lot more than anything else we can explain to people. You know, they're going to know and see that and, and understand like this. Okay, this is a real believer. Like, because people know this or, you know, that, okay, that's the essence. That's supposed to be. And that's what God wants to restore, you know, to the altar. Like, the ability for us to really go back to who we are as, you know, if we are lovers of Christ, we're following him. We should show love. And, you know, with the Ezra anointing, it's the power to be able to teach. And as a teacher, you should be able to exhibit the things you're teaching, right? And so this, that, that is a huge part of that. Um, but another part, because with God, it, it's the Matthew 6 and 33, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you put back the altar of God, you put back what should come first and prioritize him, Everything else will come. The promises will come. You will have the power to possess everything that either God has promised you through your private time with the Lord and the word or that you know has been stolen over you, from you or that words, maybe someone gave you a word or, you know, you heard a word in church and it resonated with you or just in, in, in life and it resonated with you and you realize that God was speaking to you. But that promise, that 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 thing in your life hasn't come to pass and god's like this is the hour now is the time the green light is on he literally showed me that like the green light is on now is the time to go for it to take back to possess the promises that you have and that god has for you in his word like we are his children he wants to give us everything not just in heaven but on earth and to be able to then help other people attain that empower other people so you know, I'm not just talking here about material things, but that comes with it too, because God doesn't, um, isn't, there's no lack in God, right? There's no lack, but there also, also, um, there is no sin. There is no, um, greed. There is no pride, all those things he wants to remove. So he's saying for, for you, you know, that he's releasing this and I release this over your life, the power to possess everything, everything, everything that God has for you right and that you're some of you are going to be pioneers in th some of the things that he's promised you so a pioneer a pioneer the word pioneer is a verb and a noun so you know there's an action involved and it's a person a pioneer is a person you know who is among the first to explore 
or settle in a country or a territory or an area. Um, so the first, first to do that, but then also, the devil is a lie. I'm sorry, y'all. I was playing some the music and Satan was trying to interrupt. Um, but um, the ability to possess anything that you you that God's spoken over you, and the second is to develop or to be the first to use or apply a new area of knowledge or um, activity. So some of you are going to be able to, you're going to have breakthroughs in your life where, you know, whatever God's calling you to, maybe it's a new field of study. If you're going back to school or you are in school that you're going to, he's going to give you the ability to release things into the earth that hasn't been released before. Cause he, he wants this, you know, for new beginnings. Um, and some of you, this will be in the area of like business or your career or work or ministries, like new ministries coming, um, school, your family life, like your household. So the power to just rebuild and restore things. So being the pioneer in your family. Some of you are the pioneers. You are that person in your lineage um, that's going to break through some of the things that have come against like your generations for ages on this earth which is um, crazy but amazing to um be able to say you are part of that and that god's called you to that right but god's like he's gonna do this in his with his spirit right not by might nor by power but by his holy spirit and that's why he's giving us this anointing the power to possess to take back um everything that he's promised all of the generations, but it's going to come through you. It's going to come through you, you know, like King David. Um, but we have to have, he, he showed me this word, like total dependence on him to do this. We have to draw closer to him to do this. Um, that's why our, our secret time, our worship is extremely, extremely important. So, you know, just receive this anointing and just say, I receive the Ezra anointing. I receive the power to take back my promise in the name of Jesus. Um, and that no weapon formed against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Um, you know, God's like, now is the time, you know, for like kingdom couples, kingdom marriages, like people that God is going to align to do certain things in the earth together, to be an example of the church, what um, Ephesians tells us that, you know, Christ is the church, is the head, um, and that's like the husband, and the wife is the church, and so the Christ, Christ, you know, Jesus Christ loved us, and he, um, he sacrificed for us, and he gave things up for us, as the husband should, and, you know, the wife is, is, loving and respectful and there's this mutual um love between the two and there's both love and compromise and sacrifice when when you look at the relationship of jesus christ and the church and that's the same thing with the relationship of a man and woman husband and wife and so he's releasing in this hour that anointing to have strong um couples and if you haven't met that person that he's going to bring them and as a woman like you just continue to do what you're called to do and he will bring that person and you will know um you know and that he wants you to be found while you're you're spending time with the lord like not like obviously you're not gonna find that person in your house but once you're in that place of you're you're consistent with the lord and you're with him that you wait on the lord basically and he will bring that to you not to go out seeking it um as a woman but he will bring that and it's going to be amazing, you know, like, and that's a huge part of what God is releasing and doing in this hour and for years to come because the enemy has broken relationships and broken families because people have, and, and you know, just come against them because one, some people have not prayed and really confirmed from the Lord, like, is this the person I'm supposed to be with or they've been confused or they you know, just have not kept the Lord in the center. So God's going to also restore the marriages that are supposed to be together. And, um, and I didn't mean to talk, keep talking about marriage, but he keeps letting me. So that's huge. I know that's a huge thing that the Lord wants to do because it's the foundation of the family. And, you know, that is the foundation of a community and, and state and country. And it just builds and builds and builds. And it's all about that. And God, it's, it's just the smallest component of what, the kingdom looks like you know the kingdom the fa the family um 
of the kingdom of God, essentially. And so God's like every broken place, everything that was stolen or the enemy wanted to steal, that he's going to take it back. And that you're going to be, some of you are going to be pioneers in some of those areas to lead and be an example of what real love looks like, what real um, communication looks like in a relationship, um, in business transactions, um, and just being a believer what that looks like to live it out in the world um i want to make sure and you have to do that by being totally dependent on the lord because you know just because this is released we know that in just now like with that interruption <laughs> if y'all saw what i just saw on my computer i was like really it was a pop-up i was like okay satan really don't want me to release this but it's okay i just bind that in the name of jesus but um it was a it's just a bad like creepy looking picture but nothing uh, but nothing like yeah but the, what i'm trying to say is the enemy is not going to just roll over so we have to continue to decree and declare and be in the word of god and worship the enemy hates worship as you walk this out as god you know brings you things like aligns you with people so that you are um you are actually walking out what god wants you to do and understanding that you have to guard yourself because the enemy is going to try to resist this, but in this hour, God is pushing that back and he wants you to partner with him to do it because it's going to be easier. It's not going to be the struggle. And that's the, the other part of knowing if you're being aligned, like things will come and there's going to be a peace. Sometimes you have to start and the peace comes later, but things are going to just line up. You'll know it's going to click, you know, whether it's, it'll click that, okay, I'm supposed to work with this person or I'm supposed to do this thing, or it's just going to come to you. You know, and you're going to just know because that's what God is doing with our like clarity. But you have to um, get away from distractions, really focus and be in the word consistently and worshiping. Um, that's going to be essential in this hour. So, again, the power to possess your promise. I'm going to read. Um, and, and just like Ezra, he gave me this because remember that um, first and you can read this in your own time, but the scripture that tells us, um, first Peter chapter two, verse nine, that you are a royal priesthood, you know, are, you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, just like Ezra was a high priest. And that's what God has called us to. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So we have the ability to attain this. God, you know, Jesus Christ died for us to attain this. And he's like, I want to manifest this in the earth now. This is not just a thought or an ethereal hope or wish or whatever. This is real. And you will attain it if you um, stay close to me, if you stay near to me, um, like never before, total dependence, total dependence. Um, so he wants to do that because he's really trying to rebuild that. Remembering that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, all things, like everything. Again, if you abide, if you stay close to the Lord, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Um, and I'm going to read Colossians. Colossians is in the, the New Testament for those who don't know, as well as First Peter. But um, Colossians chapter 3, let me read that. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 17. Um, and let me go ahead and hold on a second. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 7. Okay. And it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people... Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God and whatever you do whether in word or deed 
Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So again, you know, God just reminding us there that like we are his chosen people and there's a way as his chosen people that not that you once you when you first come to Christ, he's not like you have to do and do be perfect. You don't. But as you walk out your relationship with him, the Holy Spirit is going to continue to um, say and speak to you how he wants you to be, what he wants you to look like, because he why the Lord came was so that we can become like his son, Jesus Christ, right? Clothed with humility. Um, and that does the humility. When we talk about humility, it doesn't mean you see yourself as less than. It just means that you don't put yourself over and above anyone else. Like, but that you are confident in God, who he made you to be. And if you don't know what that means, you know, how God sees you, again, be in the word of God and he will show you. Read Proverbs, you know, read the Psalms, read you know, start in the New Testament and, and work your way around, but that he called us to be a chosen people and there's a way we're supposed to be in the world, forgiving and loving and we, we messed up and we fall down, but he's like, get back up. And especially in this hour, like for us to get back up every time we fall down because he wants us to attain the promises that, you know, our high calling, the purposes he's put and placed over our lives. And he's giving us even more of his anointing, his Holy Spirit to possess it, to take it um, back. And to do this, like residing in him in wisdom and like like the scripture says in Psalms and hymns, spiritual songs. It's in worship, basically, right? Um, and doing everything that we do with gratitude in our hearts and, and to honor God, right? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to honor him and to understand that we can only do this because of him but there's so much amazing things that are coming like amazing that the enemy is like trying to make all this distraction happen in the world so we can't get there because he's trying to get us to be empowered to overcome a lot of what you're happening and i'm not just talking about the political realm either there's so much else happening that if we correct it and as people as a community that we could um, restore that, some of what's happening in the political realm, right? Um, so he's, God's like, just remember that I have given you this. I've given you this anointing. I've given you this power. And it's the Hebrew year 5779, which is a year of justice and restoration and building. And, you know, that's why there's this duality because God is like, I'm removing things, I'm cleansing you, but I'm restoring things. You know, I'm giving you, I'm aligning things that need to be aligned inside you and then therefore in the world. It's going to come out, right? Um, and part of doing that, like I said, some of you are going to be pioneers. Some of you are going to do things you never thought possible. Um, and again, it's not going to necessarily manifest this year, but that it's going to be played out. You're going to see snippets of it and you're going to see the beginning of some of the, those things. Um, I'm going to just read... It's literally the first page of Chronicles in my Bible, but it's a summary. But God wanted me to read this because of remembering, especially for those of you who are going to be pioneers, who are pioneers um, in your generational line. You know, you're called to be like the David in your family. Um, it says the Chronicles were written for a people in the process of rebuilding, rebuilding their walls, their temple, their country, their lives. Judgment and exile were their most recent memories. And even at this point, they were still subject to Persia. They had once been God's people, but now with the exile over and the time for rebuilding begun, would he take them back? Meaning God, would God take them back? Would he even want them back? Remember, the Chronicles seem to say, that's remember, the word remember is, is, is a lot. And it, that's the essence of Chronicles. Remember your past. These people in your family tree are more than just dusty old names. They are part of you. Their choices are what created your history, and it is your history that shapes your present. You would do well to learn from them. You would do well to learn all you possibly can. Um, because the First Chronicles goes through uh, some of the lin all of the lineage, like starting from the Ab family of Abraham and going all the way down. Um, that's how it first starts out. And God's like, you know, I'm rebuilding your walls, your temples. I'm rebuilding everything. And some of you are going to be pioneers. But in order to do that, you have to sometimes look back at who you are, who your family is. Don't dwell on it. But, you know, a lot of that might may unfortunately be negative things that come up. But remember and honor them because they did not have the power 
to possess the promise. Just like how, you know, Moses and the Israelites, they were given the honor. To, they were, you know, God released them, right? God gave Moses that anointing, but Moses was not the one. And it, you know, Moses was not the one to take them into the promised land, which was Canaan. It, it fell to Caleb and Joshua. And that didn't mean that, like, you know, Moses was less than in what he did. Like, he, he did one act that stopped that. But that was the, you know, he had lived out his journey with the Lord, right? And so your family, like your lineage, your the people in your life that you come from, they make up. They're part of who you are. They're part of your memories and that, your memories and your moments. And that is so important to who you are to remember that but not to stay there because god's like i'm doing something new right he's doing something new and hence pioneer like you're gonna do things you've never done before <laughs> in your family line essentially um i'm gonna go ahead and read so chapter uh matthew the book of matthew um chapter 16 verse 24 to 26 you know, and God's like, this, what I'm about to read to you, this is what a pioneer is and what a pioneer does. Right here. This is what a pioneer is and a pioneer does. And again, a pioneer is like the first to take a territory, you know, release new ideas or a method, a way of doing something, um, being in a new area, that kind of thing. So a pioneer follows Jesus, right? A true pioneer, the one that's going to whatever you build is going to be able to stand because just like scripture tells us that a man who builds his foundation, you know, on sand is that doesn't make sense. He builds, he should build his foundation on the rock on solid ground. And the rock is Jesus Christ. So Matthew 16, 24 to 26. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whoever wants to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for me will find it what god what good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul or what can a man give in exchange for his soul again what good is it for a man or woman if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul because and that's really important because God's like you have to follow me because some of the things I'm going to release to you and you're going to possess I don't want them to overtake you you know and also if you've had a vision of what you thought it would look like he wants you to let that go because it might not look exactly like you thought it's going to be better right and it's going to be part of the desires of your heart but sometimes we try to envision it too much versus what god gave you that you are looking for it in the wrong way so god's like like release re let go let go release 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 and then let him give it to you so you'll know it's him like when he's speaking to you because he's confirming it in his word or he's confirming it when you're worshiping you know there are multiple ways god or you're out in the world and you've been spending time with him and god will speak to you but he's like whatever you, plans you had for your life or you thought you had let it go release it release the timeline release who you thought it would be with or whatever because that might not be unless god confirmed it before but if he hasn't or you're confused which you shouldn't be confused if it's god god's not a, a god of confusion right god when god does something you'll know like i said before you'll have peace you have confirmations and multiple confirmations if you need it you can ask for that if you need it um, but just, he's like, follow him and you'll be able to possess the promises that he has over your life. Um, so, you know, remembering that Ezra restored the temple and mainly he restored the teachings of God. So he's going to prepare you not just to possess the things he's going to give you in the world or the things you want and need, but to help build his kingdom, to build other people, to restore other people so that they know who the true and living God is. You know, they can understand what it means, what the kingdom of God means on earth, not just in heaven. Um, so he just wanted me to go ahead and do that. And, 
you know, remembering that you are building his kingdom on earth. It's the greatest unknown we've ever known. Like, I know a lot of people have prophesied in the past and said, like, you know, centuries before, or you, not centuries, like, in maybe like the 50s, 60s, 70s, oh, the time is now, da, da, da. But every generation, there's something new. But there's so many signs that's confirming that we are closer. We don't know the hour, but that's something he gave me right as I was finishing preparing this, like, today when he told me like now is the time and he said it's later than you think not in a scary way but also like let's we got to get to it we got to start building and obeying him because it is later than we think um in that timeline there's nothing really left to happen except for him to come and you know that's a whole nother teach i'm not going to go into it because it's going to look different than you think and then there's the, the tricks of the enemy that's been laid with the mainstream way of the, how that's been taught, like the rapture, basically, what I'm talking to you about and what that even means. So, um, but I'll have to do a teaching on that in itself. That's like a whole nother topic. But um, God's just like, it's later than you think, right? And he's releasing this because he's going to bring acceleration and momentum and power and the grace to do it. He's like, he's going to give you the grace to do it and the power to do it because he's releasing this over your life. Um and it's going to be amazing. There's a lot of great things in store, like amazing adventures. He, he keeps showing me the word adventure. He's been for a while. Adventures and exploration. Because in order to build and restore, you also have to have the sense of joy and contentment. And you only get that through the Lord, spending time with him, not from like necessarily. It doesn't first come from people or an experience. It comes from the Lord. Um, but he is going to allow us to experience some amazing things as we walk with him Um amazing and to build like build his kingdom on the earth like he's like you build my kingdom i will build yours you build my kingdom i will build yours you build my house i will build yours says the lord and that's a prophetic word because over you uh, i didn't have that written down so um i love you guys and hope you are doing well if you're not like get into worship pray um, you know, and just know that the Lord loves you dearly. And this, it was just amazing when I heard that and to be able to release that to y'all, um, that you're going to, and to know that this is a process. So you're going to have to fight for this, but not fight in a way that it's hard. Just resting in him by those things that I said, the worship, the word, prayer, fasting. I'm going to do a teaching on fasting. He wanted me to do, um, he told me to do in the next week or two. It's very important. Um, but um, for those of you who don't know, but if you do know about fasting, you know. And he might have been telling you to fast or start. So um, you can start a simple one, like one meal a day or whatever. But um, uh, obviously for those with medical issues, consult your doctor. I'm not a physician. Um, but I'm going to do a, a teaching on that because that's been a huge thing for me the last couple of years that God has released some things into my life um, and increased some things. So, yeah, hope you guys are blessed. Love you guys, and I will see you on the next chat. All right, shalom, bye-bye.